When it comes to places where wildlife lives, towns and cities might not be at the top of your list. And with more than 84% of the population of the UK living in these places, it's not hard to see why. But of course, for the bold and the brave, there is a life to be made here. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the common and rarer wildlife that lives in our towns and cities. And I'm going to start with not only the fastest animal in this video, but the fastest animal on the planet. Peregrine falcons can dive at more than 200 miles an hour and feed exclusively on other birds which they catch on the wing. In the UK, there are around 1,750 pairs of peregrines, which is a drastic increase from in the 1960s when there were just 385. People have not always liked these birds, but now they're encouraged in urban places where many specially made nesting platforms have been erected for them. Despite this, two out of every five peregrine chicks that fledge do not survive their first year. Peregrines may be the top predators of our urban skies, but on the ground, red foxes are usually top dog. There are around 150,000 urban foxes in the UK, which is a massive increase from the 33,000 that were found here in 1995. It's also a big contrast compared to rural foxes, whose numbers have declined over that time. Although urban foxes are bolder and more inquisitive than their countryside counterparts, studies have shown that they are not more intelligent than them. Away from people, a red fox's diet consists of around 95% meat, but in towns and cities, this makes up just half of what they eat. The rest of their food consists of scraps and scavenged food waste. The UK is more than 4,500 miles from the natural range of the ring-necked parakeet, and yet they have found a home in most of the larger cities here and even in some of the smaller towns. Of course, they got a helping hand from people and were released in multiple locations since the late 19th century. Estimates of their numbers vary greatly from 24,000 to more than 40,000. Worryingly, it's thought that they can displace native birds from both nesting sites and feeding areas as they are smarter and bolder than most of them. No video about urban wildlife can really be made without mentioning the kings of urban living, feral pigeons. These birds were originally descended from wild rock doves that were domesticated for sending messages, for racing and for food. Because of their mixed heritage, feral pigeons come in a wide range of colours and sizes. As they'll usually select the mate that looks different from themselves, the variation is passed on to their offspring. The man-made ledges within our cities provide feral pigeons with the perfect place for nesting, and with their homing instinct, they can return to them from great distances. Some racing pigeons can find and return to their home from more than 2,000 miles away. Unfortunately, feral pigeons are often called rats with wings, and the next animal I'm going to speak about are rats with tails. Until the 18th century, there was only one species of rat in the UK, the black or ship rat. This species is now thought to be completely gone here and has been replaced by the brown rat. You may have heard wild figures thrown around saying things like, you are never more than six foot from a rat, but that is a complete myth. Sometimes, you might be within six foot of one, but according to rough maths, it's more likely that there is one rat within about 164 feet of you, if you are in an urban place. Brown rats are intelligent omnivores and will eat pretty much anything. They have a very strong sense of smell, far better than humans and even better than dogs. Some research has shown that they can pinpoint the direction of smells without turning their heads, by recognising the difference in the strength of an odour 
from one nostril to the other. You might notice a running theme here in that a lot of the species that share our urban spaces with us are not always loved by everyone and that is definitely true for herring gulls. Traditionally this species was mainly found in coastal colonies but whilst these populations have dropped by more than 50% over the past 50 years, urban numbers of herring gulls are on the rise. Our rooftops make the perfect nesting site for them and our towns and cities provide lots of food. They eat scraps and raid rubbish bins but are also intelligent enough to draw worms to the surface of grassy areas by pattering their feet to mimic rain. Whilst herring gull numbers are rising in urban areas, house sparrows tell a mixed story. Overall, their numbers have dropped by around half since the 1970s, but since the early 2000s, this decline hasn't been mirrored over the whole of the UK. In England, their numbers have continued to fall and may still be doing so, but in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, their numbers have actually increased. At the most recent count, there are approximately 10.6 million of them. House sparrows are sexually dimorphic, where males and females look different to one another. For a long time, it was thought that the size of the black bib on male birds represented their social status, but recent studies have shown this might not actually be the case. As their name suggests, house sparrows usually live in urban areas, and although they are native to Europe, some parts of Asia and Northern Africa, they've been introduced by people to South and North America, New Zealand, Australia and South Africa. Another urban species that has been introduced around the world but which isn't doing too well in the UK is the starling. Their numbers have dropped by more than 50% over the last 30 years and it seems that they are still falling. Starlings nest in hollows and cavities, finding plenty of suitable places in our towns and cities. Alongside food that people put out for them, they are brilliant at finding insects and other invertebrates among the closely cropped lawns of some urban spaces. In the winter, they'll form large flocks and perform aerial displays known as murmurations before going to roost. Another bird that is impressive to watch in the air is the swift. This species visits the UK for a short period in the summer where it often nests under roof tiles and in the eaves of houses. They are known for their speedy and agile flight and once they are finished nesting they do everything on the wing, including eating, drinking and even sleeping. During the winter they head to warmer places, often passing through Spain and Portugal on their way south to Africa. Some cities in the UK have designated parklands within them and many of these are home to managed herds of deer. The two top species for this are the native red deer and the introduced fallow deer. They do sometimes escape their parkland homes and there are feral herds that are occasionally spotted along city streets, often after dark when there are less people about to disturb them. And this is when another urban mammal makes its appearance, the humble and much loved hedgehog. In the past 23 years, numbers of the UK's favourite mammal have dropped by as much as 77%, including those that live in rural and urban areas. However, the most recent figures show that in towns and cities, their numbers have stabilised since 2021, and there is a chance that they may be starting to increase in number once more. There are some animals that live alongside people, but there are others that have evolved because of us. One example of this is the London Underground Mosquito, which is a completely unique subspecies that has evolved in the tube systems of London. It was first discovered during the Second World War, and it's thought that it's distinct enough from mosquitoes above the ground that it can no longer breed with them. 
Most urban animals have to be smart to eke out a living among us, and that is definitely true of the magpie. They're one of the smartest animals on the planet and have been shown to recognize themselves in a mirror, to be able to make and use simple tools, to play games, to work in teams, and to mimic humans and other noises. Because of this intelligence and their adaptability, magpies are one of the only animals in this video whose numbers are increasing. In fact, in the past 50 years, their overall numbers have more than doubled in urban areas. As some animals move out of our urban world, there are plenty of others that are making their way into it. I'm sure I will cover some of these in a part two of this video in the future. But that is sadly where today's video comes to an end. If you want to discover more British wildlife, then why not discover the creatures that live in our woodlands? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.